today we're going to be looking through all of the icon strikers and just seeing is there any that are still worth it? With the likes of Watkins coming through and some of the Galazzo heroes for absolute pence, does these heroes shape up? Now, obviously, when we look at the top of the top, they're always going to be very good in any aspect. When you're looking at a Pele, you're looking at a Hullet, you know full well what you're getting. And I think Nep says it pretty well when it's not now, not necessarily a pay to win, even though it kind of is at times, it's kind of more of a pay to advance. It's to get that inclusion of the better R9, the better Cruyff. They may give you a slight advantage, but if you've got a full team of 99s, if you're going up against even just a bog standard 90 team, maybe they've got a base R9, maybe they've got just a lowest team of the season price team that you can get and they are better, they more than likely will win. Whereas in previous games, the R9s, the Hams, the Cruyffs, the Hullets, the Eusebios would give you a massive, massive advantage. So if you're looking to improve your team, make sure you're heading over to lootbar.gg. They are the best and most reliable coin service you can find. Also with the best 24 hour manual customer service that you physically cannot find anywhere else. But before finishing on lootbar.gg, make sure you are using the code JT11, 8% off your first ever transaction and then 5% off every time after that. Once you've gone through the payment, you'll be able to get your coins within the next 24 hours absolutely guaranteed. Also with the code, you'll be able to get 5% more coins on every transaction. Make sure you do click the link either in the description or down in the comment section below. So without further ado, let's get into it then. So straight off the bat, there is a lot of bases here that are just going straight into the absolute bog standard tier. And I think there's no qualms with this anymore. Pretty much most of them now are without a shadow of a doubt, pretty useless when it comes to in-game. And, and that is why the progression is a thing. And I do think now there's probably only so many bases that I'd even consider putting into a team, to be honest. So let's just get all of them in here. We'll kind of go through because, to be honest, I don't think there is many bases that would go above this, to be honest. Uh, Boutre... Do you know, you know what? Even Boutre nowadays, I, he's got two more upgrades... I don't see it. Cantona, I'd, I'd go for it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull the trigger. I do like Dalglish. Drogba has a certain side to him. You know what? If if they, They've got to. They, they've absolutely got to. If they're going up there, that's got to be done. Uh, good. Muller slightly better. Then we've got the rest of the bases. So, Eto, yeah, he can't, he can't go much higher than that. Henri. Now, one reason interesting one, because I think the Rapid Plus really carries in this year. The, the Rapid Plus is absolutely phenomenal. He's still coming in at 239. I'm just debating. He was in the S before. I, I don't think I could quite go in the S anymore. Uh, the Rapid definitely is still very, very viable as an option. But I, I just, I don't see him being higher than that. Especially with the levels of cards we've got now. The whole point of progression is the thing. Push gas, I'd go in the same what does Cruyff has on his base? Because I'm so used to now that the Galazzo and Thunderstruck version, what has even the base got? He's got Flair. Still 766. I think this might be the one of the first years where I'd actually put a Cruyff in an S rather than an S plus. And I think that is totally down to progression. Ham and an R9, I think, are just the absolute outcasts of this they do not crumble whatever i've played against mia ham i've used mia ham r9 is exactly the same and every single game they do something and i, I can't say that with many icons now we've seen the likes of eusebio mainly centurion's version from the sbc and they are still very good but them two together are just above the rest and that obviously goes uh, without said for their team of the year versions both of them are just fantastic. We then have some of the Centurions. Now, Rooney was a, a complete disappointment with the Centurions. It was only until the Future Stars where I actually got some hype for him. Uh, Trezeguet would be the same, to be honest. I'd even throw Smith in there, to be fair to her. Hullet, on the other hand, is, is just a freak of nature. Whatever position you put him in, he's just perfect in any way. You say, I'm going to start bringing down a little bit. I, I do think now we're, we're kind of looking at very similar cards, to be honest. They were released so close to each other. Um, we are still absolutely banging on for another upgrade for him. His SBC was about 2.4. It's, it's a cracking SBC, don't get me wrong. With the fact that Mbappe was next to him as well, you could literally get two strikers that would have lasted you 
you two team of the season very, very comfortably. Like, there's only been so many times now where I've seen Eusebio out of teams, um, but for literally, like, four or five months, or maybe a bit of an exaggeration, probably like three months, he was in people's teams. And if you're spending two and a half million on an SBC, getting three months out of a top tier card is very, very good. But in terms of the upgrade, it, it's hard to like, it's absolutely crazy. Like he got the rapid plus, there was no skill move or weak foot upgrade. It was very much just a singular upgrade on the card, which was fair enough for the Centurions. But I am very shocked we haven't had anything since then. We're going on to the Thunderstrucks. Cantona probably only moves up one, to be honest. He only managed to get the single upgrade, I believe, if we can find him anywhere. Yeah, from 89 to 90. So again, very, very, just nothing, to be honest. Cruyff, this, this is where I completely disagree. Cruyff is amazing than any other version. The 93 is just slowly coming down, pure to stats. But he still is an incredible card. Dalgleish will probably go into the A+. Thierry Henry will still go into the S there. Gerd Muller will move up one. Pushcast, was this the version? Because I know he's got two extra inform, oh, well, two extra increases. We got the four star three and the four star three. Yeah, it's the next version that goes up. That's fair enough. Again, we got the double upgrade, but it isn't going to be enough. The play star pluses at this point in the game really matter. Like they genuinely matter massively when it comes to just going forward in a game like going with no play stars versus play stars is crazy how much they have made it matter as well dynasty is pretty easy one to be honest we only got cliver and larson from these and and to be fair to them they never really hit off at the start zola I, I'd, I'd still put zola in in a good category I, I don't think he's dropped massively but he he again definitely needs an upgrade alongside a lot of people barnes bog standard same as hernandez Drug I still I still rate a little bit. It, it's kind of a little bit lower now, but we have got a much, much better version in himself. Pele will definitely go up. Raul will go into that A+. Raquel me, I never liked, but to be fair, over the course of this FIFA, there's a lot of people that really like this Raquel me. And I, honestly, I've just not really seen it, to be honest. Now, I don't know if it's just kind of like it, it's taken away from his credit, but this Torres was absolutely burnt by the fact that they gave us an SBC. And he was literally half the value of it then and there. Now he's at 188 and the SBC still is at 443. I, I don't know if, if now I'm feeling a little bit more gutted for him. But he was a brilliant card that definitely could have done with the Galazzo upgrade. If we saw like a 92, 93 Torres with a double or triple play star plus eventually. That would be outstanding because he's very, very good this year. Same as Raul must, must have. Future stars, we got a few upgrades here. I love Rooney in this version. I think he is, that is the Rooney that I want to see. The Centurions was a little upgrade. Like we said, it was very close for the bases being out anyway. So it, it was kind of understanding that they're not going to give him an absolute crazy card going forward. But the future stars was the upgrade I definitely wanted. Crespo, uh, he didn't really hit from the very start, to be honest. Shevchenko wasn't terrible in himself. And, and same with Smith. She weren't awful in that version, but... We started now to really see the, the, the gap between what the kind of newest icons can do and the lower ones. It, ju it just is the progression model. Hugo Sanchez, love, love, love the card. Larson would still would still hit the lower. Obviously, with the Hugo Sanchez, like a lot of them, they do have the double, which is a 4-5 and a 5-4. I think both of them are very similar. It all depends on what you prefer. I always like, as a striker, a five-star skiller, but I can completely understand the other argument. I normally like the five-star week for, for more my uh, kind of midfield more than anything. Wingers are the same. I prefer the skill move, but it is each to their own, really. I think Ian Wright kind of is up there, but he, he definitely would have been up there at the very start of the release of Ultimate Birthday Icons and then slowly brings himself down. Closer, very similar. Do like the card. Very big upgrade for Closer, but you're not seeing him in anybody's team now. It's just not going to happen. Butra, phenomenal card. Very, very good card. Same as the... Oh, no, I suppose that's why I was thinking. I was like, where's his Winter Wild card? But I suppose that is a left wing. He's not a striker and can't be a striker in it. Whereas when we look at this version, 1.45 mil, absolutely insane. A lovely 5.5 five as well. It is a shame he didn't get any shooting play style pluses. It was just technical and quick step, which isn't my combination choice if I'm being brutal. Hullet and Henri... 
Easy. Easiest option you've got in there. Them two, beautiful upgrade again. I, I can't believe they gave us a 5-5 Hullet so early on as well. Like, we weren't even into team of the season. Normally, that's kind of late end of the game before we get a 5-5 Hullet, but I'll take it anyway. Then we also have Raul and Stoichkov. Stoichkov is incredible. Raul this year has been a massive surprise because normally he is just bog standard. Like, there is nothing really kind of warranting him being in anybody's team. Yet this year... I think he's really put in a shift to actually be very good this year. I, I don't know if the meta's just suited him or not, but a very, very good card nonetheless. Van Nistelrooy, I, I do love this card. I think it's a great upgrade. Like Ian Wright, the upgrade on him is superb. It's exactly what we wanted. And I think that period of fantasy, future star, ultimate birthday, we started to really get the cards that were actually meaningful to be upgraded. Like we look at a Hugo Sanchez from his previous version. It's a big upgrade that we need to put him in the light. Same as Ian Wright and Van Nistelrooy. They, their icons are bug, bug standard. Obviously with Van Nistelrooy, he did have a goalkeeper. So he kind of had that time out where he didn't have a technical striker upgrade. So it is nice to see it now. Then we also have 97 Pele. I mean, you can't argue with 97 Pele. It just isn't happening. When it comes to the Galazzo cards, this is where it really hit for the cheap play. It was almost like the EA were going, okay, we've got team of the season coming up. We've got six to seven weeks. We've got this million player kind of new pools, figure, figuratively speaking. It's just new players. So you've got new players or people that play casually. How do we catch them up so they get the most out of team of the season? You know what? Let's give hero and icons that literally cost absolute pence especially when it comes to the hero side of stuff but when you look at some of these cards like we're looking at um kind of the lower ones but even like a van percy a 91 five star four star van percy sixty four thousand. you see then even a 90 center back still will give you very good options 29k francescoli 36 yes you've still got your janolas and you've still got your awarans at over five six hundred but then you look at a berbatov at 93 at 100 prince at 94 73 000. maybe not the most ideal card in the world like they're not going to give you 20 and 0 every week if you've not got that ability but most definitely you can catch up on rating which is a big factor for stats and most definitely they did it very well now, where would I put them? Cruyff obviously goes up there. Pushgas will follow him. Drogba, I am very, very close to putting him into that S+, plus because if you've not used that card, how good Drogba is in this in game, let me start that again, how good Drogba is in this game is incredible. He is a 700k card. He's kind of gone a bit more up than what I imagine, but he is brilliant for it. And I think that kind of suggests it. I don't even know. Does the curve go up? Yeah, you can see there. Like, no card that is bad goes up. Like, the supply of him was insane. So, the, the fact that he's gone up as well is, is, is just a credit to how good that card actually is in the game. One that I wasn't too pleased with, and I, and I did finish him was Cantona. I, I I thought he was a good card. I, I just didn't see him as a spectacular card, especially for the price that you paid. He was almost, I, I was kind of blinded by him. He was 1.2 mil. He's a 5.4, which I thought could have been a 5.5, to be honest, but I was kind of looking between the upgrade of obviously his Thunderstruck and this version, and it's a nice upgrade. Four pays, two on a few other things, but Really, I, I just didn't get the vibe that he was actually any good. And to be honest, I probably should have took the hint that he does have the chip shot plus. Van Persie, very, very good card in himself. Slow, slightly losing his cut touch a little bit. Prince, I would probably go the 91. I see, I, I still I still like her. I think the 94. Could I no, I can't I can't put her on the same level of as, as kind of push gas and Henri. She's very good, but there's she's cheap for a reason, and, and most definitely she is there as an enhancer to bring a, a lower team, a lower price team up to the rank. She's got great output, but it most definitely isn't going to kind of uh, concede to a, a 500, a million coin card. Same as Lineker. The biggest thing for Lineker was the fact that he could go into the, I think it's called the Galazzo show. Um, that upgrade was fantastic just for the extra one increase. Free pace, free shooting, free phys uh, physical. Great for a striker. And it just made him that little bit better that you could go with a hunter, you could go with a finisher and really get yourself a monster of a card. And I don't even know if they were the best. I was going to say NG 
Imagine probably is better because his shooting was already that good. A 95 rated striker, 98 pace, 86 passing, 91 on his agility balance for literally, what was it, 80, 80k? I mean, what could you not like about that card? Very cheap and affordable, but make sure that you don't kind of cross the lines between Lineker being better than a push gas, being better than someone like a Butra. That isn't the case. He's just very cheap for what you can actually get back from him. So that's going to be the list. Let me know down below. Agree, disagree. Should people be moved? Who's your favorite icon striker? Hopefully we do get through team of the season and get back on that icon grind because the triple play style plus icons and heroes are going to go off. Let me know your thoughts and I'll catch you all for the next one. Peace.